Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Philanthropy is not only for the billionaires and institutions. Good, because that would disqualify me right away. Our next guest created a crowdsourced <laughs> donation platform that makes philanthropy engaging and accessible to the next generation of donors. He is a co-founder, along with his co-founder, Omar Butts, the co-founder and chief technology officer. The company is called, in fact, Fahad Kushiri. Did I say your name right? It's Qureshi. Fahad Qureshi. Qureshi, sorry. Okay. Uh, Fahad Qureshi, very good. Well, no thank, thanks for joining us. And tell me a little bit about the company. And it's spelled not like it sounds, I guess maybe in another language perhaps, but I-N-F-A-Q-U-E. Does that mean something? And in That's what right. language? <laughs> yes, it, it, it's, it, came from, it comes from ancient Arabic, and it means to selflessly give and make things better. Oh. So it's directly in line with basically another word for philanthropy, to be honest. Okay. Oh, very cool. Because that's also the website is in fact, I-N-F-A-Q-U-E dot com. And of course, we'll link you there. Have no fear. Uh, but tell me about in fact as a company. How is it that you and Omar founded this company? What prompted you to do that? Yeah, so I, I've been working at, um, my, most of my career was working in technology in banks. Uh, and Omar's was working as a consultant. And we were like, you know what, we got to do something to make the world a little bit better, as opposed to just making, you know, rich people richer, which is sort of what we were doing. <laughs> and, and got us thinking, well, what can we do? What skills can we bring to the table? Being a techie and love tech and recognizing how the market is changing, we're like, okay, let's figure out what the problem is. And we started investigating and found out that nonprofits, so charities and and nonprofits are actually losing the num losing donors, and part of it is because they're they're unable to sort of communicate in a way that the young folks understand. And those people now getting older, they're used to doing things digitally, which maybe the older generation didn't need to, didn't expect, and because and we want to fill that gap. We're also finding nonprofits just don't have the budgets to do it all themselves. So we figured, hey. What if we, we built a platform that they could use so they wouldn't have to invest the tons of money in building something and let these nonprofits use it in a way that will allow the younger generation to pay those small and to be able to contribute small amounts. And through technology, we'll be able to scale that up and get them additional revenue and get them engage, additional do, um, donors, get the engagement higher. And so that when these people grow up, they're now the bigger donors for those larger uh, and making those larger donations as well. What a terrific idea. I mean, and, and the fact that you can let any of us, uh, especially now, as you mentioned, these younger folk say, yeah, I'm also a philanthropist, you know, and it's like, ooh, you know. <laughs> but uh, hey, but it's a good feeling. You know, it's good to give to it others. Is. It's good to have that that feeling. I know, unfortunately, everybody doesn't think that way. But come on, I've especially as I got older, you know, I, I got so much more joy out of giving gifts, at, whether it be Christmas or a birthday or something, rather than receiving them. Yeah, it's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. And please don't stop giving me gifts. Yeah. Uh, but the fact is that you get much more pleasure out of seeing someone's reaction, knowing they're benefiting from something that you've done and provided. Uh, what a great way to get more folks involved. And, and how is it then that you guys make money? Do you take a, a little percentage or something? I mean, that's, you know, what is the yeah. business plan? How does that work? So um, one of the key things we do is we provide transparency to sort of the younger donor. They see per dollar where it's all going. And with this platform, we enable it for a nonprofit. We have two ways that we make make money. A lot of nonprofits and charities already have pretty significantly sized fundraising departments. So they're able to spend up to, in some cases, $200,000 to fundraise. So we take a cut out of that. We're figuring out our pricing model, but basically there'll be a yearly subscription, which will be quite a lot smaller than what they're already spending on fundraising. And we'll also take a transaction processing fee because that's what we have to give to PayPal or Stripe or whoever oh, we're sure. using yeah. on our back end. So it's two bases, uh, pay per transaction fee and a yearly fee. And um, hopefully, you know, it, it'll be cost effective and they'll, they'll see their revenues go up. Is this something that you're already getting reaction from a lot of people, especially some of these young people? Are they saying, well, yeah, if it's that easy and I don't have to come up with money I don't have, sure, I'd like to help. 
Absolutely. We're finding that the experience of seeing where, per dollar where your money went, the ability to interact directly with the project manager of the project you're funding is amazing. They may not use it, but they love the fact that they can and they can see that transparency. Uh, from the nonprofit side, we've met so many nonprofits here at Collision, and they're like, hey, sign me up. When can I do this? So we have like seven or eight lined up already awesome. because it's so desperately needed because they know they're unable to interact with their with their donors in a way that they that makes sense. So we're super psyched to, especially with what we learned over here at Collision. I, I like how your website right away says, reclaim your right to be a philanthropist. And, and it is uh-huh. your right. And, and, and you want to have that warm, fuzzy feeling as well of helping. Now, do you anticipate a lot of organizations joining you so that there's a lot to choose from? So that if somebody has a particular uh, cause that's near and dear to their heart or, or something of that nature, that they can kind of begin to select who they want to donate to or divide it up amongst a few, hopefully, uh, and how much they can provide? Absolutely. And so as we, because we started off with our family and friends, we really wanted to prove that the technology worked. So we're check. It does work. Now we're looking to expand. And so as we increase our donor pool, we get more and more money coming in. When you sign up as a donor, you select the causes that are most near and dear to your heart? Is it environmental protection? Is it food security? Is it clean water? Is it education? So as a user or as a donor, you're selecting what matters to you. And when a charity comes and says, hey, I need money, you get notified and say, hey, do you think these are, do you want your money going here? Yes or no? You have about a week to decide. And if you say no, honor your your request we don't your funds participate in that pool otherwise the money goes out and this way as we get more donors we'll get more charities involved and the beautiful thing is we proved that the idea works now we're looking to sort of scale it out and get more and more participants on the platform and more and more um uh, nonprofits as well. So this way, we kind of want to increase both at the same time. Oh, for sure. It, it makes it makes perfect sense. So am I understanding correctly that folks would kind of donate a certain amount of money uh, and, and it goes into a pool and then they decide where it should go so that you need them to sort of sign up with a few bucks to begin with and then make some subsequent yeah. decisions? Absolutely. Absolutely. So as a donor, I sign up, I say, I care about education. So I say, I'm going to give 10 bucks a month, five bucks a month, 20 bucks a month, whatever small amount I can afford. And everybody's doing this. So that pool for education keeps going up and up and up. What ends up happening is if there's a project for a charity that's in education, they come in and say, hey, I have a project that's going to work on education for some uh, indigenous community in Canada. They're like, okay. We say, hey, contributor, you've been giving us money. Here's a new project that came along, a new campaign. Do you like it? Yes or no. If they say no, we don't use that money. If if they don't say anything, we assume that they're comfortable with their, their money going. So this way, we're empowering um, the donors. We're making uh, making it more democratized, so that mm-hmm. as a collective, the donor community has a voice in where the money is going. That kind of explains how on your site you talk about uh, it being a frictionless giving and digital engagement platform. Uh, frictionless Absolutely. is cool. And and obviously with folks these days, I mean, I even use, I, I even as old as I am, I even use, uh, you know, Cash App and, and Venmo and things like uh, PayPal uh, quite yeah. frequently. A lot more I've discovered than I use any credit card anymore, which is a good thing. Um, so again, you make it as easy as possible for folks to contribute to things that are important to them. Frictionless is super important because we're finding that with the younger generation, they're so used to things being so seamless. So the experience, it's all about the experience. And we learned a lot from Apple that they sort of pioneered this mindset is make it a perfect experience, not so much about the technology, but make it about the experience. And that's we want to optimize the experience so that it's smooth, frictionless, transparent and empowering. And that those are some of our key foundational principles that we believe in. Uh, Fahad, is there a minimum amount that folks need to to meet in order to get started or is it whatever they can do? Five dollars oh, is our minimum. Five dollars. And the wow. reason for that is your payment processors, they're gonna take a five dollars. Yeah, that's that's all. It's just because um because we're our technology platform, it's easy for us to work with small amounts. Um, but the payment, the credit card systems, they always take a minimum like a thirty percent uh, thirty cent cut 
plus three percent on average and so yeah. it just makes sense that you know you give five bucks at least four and a bit are going to the charity right well so that's, that's, that's the only good. reason yeah and it might Otherwise, we would have gone lower even but oh, five sure. bucks. <laughs> well and it might be i think for a lot of people listening five bucks my gosh i can afford that but it's such a small amount yeah but if you get a lot of people doing five, 10, 15, 20 bucks. There. Exactly. And now you're making a difference. And I can see where many charities are going to say, hey, we're in uh, because we'd love a piece of that, whatever yeah. it is. You know, it's all about quantity. What are some of the charities that you're already working with and others that you anticipate uh, so folks listening can say, yeah. ah, I'm in? Yeah, so when we started out, we wanted to keep it small. So we talked to a bunch of charities that we know. So one is called Dyslexia Canada, and they work um, in educating parents of dyslexic children on how to deal with them. That's one. Yeah. There was another one called Angan, which is a, a food bank sort of nonprofit that gives, um, it runs food banks throughout different cities in Canada and has other programs to sort of help people. Um, the third one is called the Amazon Rainforest conservancy in peru where basically they protect at the amazon rainforest they hire guards to our uh, rangers to protect the wildlife um and those are some of the charities that we're already oh and there's another one called uh, rumi which is an education platform especially um out in like afghanistan where women can't get educated they sort of work behind the scenes to get a lot of the women um education because you know things are getting a little bit rough uh and we we also work with um and they actually did a food bank for Ukraine. They they did a they used some of the funds for uh, food banks over there. And all of that you can actually see on a website when you click on active campaigns. It'll give you all a list of all the campaigns that we've uh, that are currently live right now or that we've worked with in the past. Okay, terrific. Well, between uh, your fellow co-founder Omar and yourself, Fahad, uh, we thank you uh, for spending a few minutes with us. We wish you much success because I think not only does this make it easy as we've said all along, for anyone to consider themselves a philanthropist. And we all should, even if it's a small amount initially. Yes. And then you get that good, warm, fuzzy feeling. And then you say, yeah, here's another 10, another 20, another, another 100, whatever you can do. It would, would really help so many people. And I think that's terrific. So keep up the good work. And we, uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you so much for having us. It's our pleasure. And we invite folks to visit your site. It's infac.com, spelled I-N-F-A-Q-U-E, infac.com. We'll get you there. Visit us at intotomorrow.com, and you'll check out their site and what their team is up to. And consider becoming a philanthropist. And let us know, because uh, we encourage you to do just that. I'm Dave Graveline. Stay tuned as Into Tomorrow continues right here on the Advanced Media Network.